Mondstadt has Vindagnir, Inazuma has Enkanamiya, and now Liwe has the Chasm. I don't know about you, but if the old world has this many cities and possibly single buildings larger than all seven regions' capitals combined, just scattered all over Teyvat, then how big is the old world? And if it was a mega city or one big unified civilization like the books mentioned, the question wouldn't be where it is, but where did this city stretch out to? And how far would their civilization reach? This video won't be structured in any way and I'll be using a lot of speculative info on what the entirety of the old world would be. Now, let's get on with the video. Starting with this civilization. Basically, these ruins or any ruin you see with this symbol, I think is from a civilization separate from the United One. So it's not related to Ankanamiya or the Chasm. I made a video regarding their looks and design being completely different, so you can watch that if you want. But if you still want to continue watching this one, it's fine because TLDR, this type of civilization is from the old world, but not from the unified civilization itself. I theorize that it could be from the second god that either beat Fanes or that Fanes decided to make a new civilization after the Second Heavenly War. Whichever one you think happened, these ruins aren't the same as Enkanamiya or the Chasm. So how much of these can we currently see on Teyvat? Well, the largest concentration of these ruins by far, I think, is Dragonspine. But there are many other locations with these ruins scattered everywhere else too. The interesting bit about this is that they all have the same Triketra symbol or Trinity Knot symbol. And other other than that, there's not much or close to no consistent lore regarding their background apart from Salvin Dagnir. But this kingdom is theorized to be the old kingdom before the other gods descended from Celestia. See, the theory goes that before the gods like let's say Morax, Guizhong, Andreas, and the Caribbean came to Teyvat, the mortals who lived didn't have a god that could protect or govern over them. You can't say that they had Fanes or the primordial one as their god because everyone on the surface, including Conria, don't know who Fanes was. Or is if he's still alive. So these people were separate from the unified civilization. You can find smaller sets of ruins like this near Quincy Village and the Geo Domain. Another interesting bit about these ruins is that quite a lot of them are in Inazuma. That's right, Dragonspine might be the place with the biggest concentration of these ruins, but in Inazuma, there is at least three areas that have these same ruins. And I'm not talking about small sets of bricks either. Compared to Mondstadt and Inazuma, and especially Dragonspine that have literal crumbling bits, Inazuma has almost intact sets of these ruins, namely places like the Perpetual Array, Seirai's Whole City, and Surumi's Underground Ruin. I might have missed a few, but these three alone are enough to show how big the old world really is. In terms of size and scope, the old world, or as I like to call it, Triketra Kingdom, is quite big. And a single section of this civilization could possibly even dwarf all seven regions' capitals in Teyvat combined. But that's if every city of every region is as big as a small town. Please Hoyoverse give us a mega city in Sumeru! Now that we're done talking about how big these are, let's see how much of Teyvat currently it is consuming or how much of Teyvat currently has all these Triketra Kingdom ruins. Now a lot of these ruins are let's say smaller areas but you can see all over the current Teyvat that they also have smaller sets of let's say town-like ruins. So you could say that the entirety of the old Triketra Kingdom is as big as this one. But that's just theory, because we don't really know how much of these small town ruins were actually using up the amount of space inside of each region. But one thing I'm sure of is that the bigger areas, like the Thousand Winds Temple, or let's say the ruins where the Perpetual Array is. Now that we're done with the unknown civilization, we can move on to the Chasm and Enkanamiya, which are, well, by canon, part of the unified civilization. Something interesting about the unified civilization is that they have some sort of relation to Conria. Dainsleaf specifically said that it resembled Conria and the only difference was that Conria was right side up. So does that mean that Conria was part of the unified civilization? Mm, no, maybe? Until Hoyoverse states that this is actually canon, we can only speculate that Conria could be part of the old world before it sunk. And like Ankanamiya, they survived on their own without a proper god to govern over them. I know Enkanamiya didn't really have a god per se, but it's also true that they mentioned Easteroth being there to answer their prayers. So not entirely true, but not entirely false either. If you want to know more about Easteroth and Enkanamiya, you can watch my other previous video about the old world. Now on to the absolute 
girth, length, and size of this bad boy. I'm talking about the city, okay? So judging from how Ekonomia looks right now, it seems to have parts of the city sunken in and basically can't be found. But the general size of this city would have been very large. If you bring this map up to the surface, then it would look like this. Oddly, the chunks of land fits perfectly minus the serpent's bowels, which is right under Sangonomia Shrine. It's as if all the different chunks in Ekonomia were all part of Watatsumi. Now, if we, let's say, imagine that this city was still complete or still in one piece, then maybe it would look something like this. Regarding Ekonomia's size, we're gonna have to ballpark it a bit, but this is as accurate as I could be. Of course, I'm basing all the format and design on Greek slash Roman cities because the way their structures look like really strike me as Greek or Roman when I first saw it. No real in-depth research into it, but the structures and columns resembling a lot of Roman structures such as forums, horiums, and insulas, etc. really gave that sort of impression on me. So I might make a more in-depth video on what Kanria and what Ankanamiya was based on in a later date if I feel like it. <clears throat> but anyway, this setup and its scale alone compared to the first three regions really pale in comparison. And that's just for Ankanamiya. We're not even in the chasm yet. Look at this cave. Now obviously both the chasm and Ankanamiya are basically the same. The main difference here is that the chasm or the upside down city has this weird upside down gimmick going on. That and hilly churls like to go to it when they, you know, oof. But nobody really says that the same thing happens with the churls in Ankanamiya. All we know is that the closer the hilly churls are to the chamber in the chasm, the more they feel at home. Their protectors, the shadowy husks or serpent knights, shout at intruders getting close. But we're talking about how big this place is, not the lore. So if we take the entire chasm map and raise it from the ground and put it on top of Liwe, you would see that it would look like this. Yes, that's right, the hole that you jump into in the entrance of the chasm leads you into the ad hoc mining area and not at the nail. So that's where we're gonna base our locations from. Now for the size of the chasm, I was also ballparking it a bit depending on how big the hole would be. But as it stands, the size of the chasm is as follows. We have the nail chamber, the three areas to ring the bell, and the upside down tower. Everything else would either be buried or too destroyed to make up anything with. So I'd assume that it would be at least this big. Because we're making room for possible other ruins to open up in future patches. So now that we've figured out how much of the old triple knot Tricatra kingdom can be found, as well as putting up a hypothetical setup for Ankanamiya and the chasm, we can highlight each part of table that is encompassed by either the Unified Civilization or the Triketra Kingdom. But having said that, we will also include the ruins from Mondstadt and Liwe. Sadly, no Inazuma because, well, you know, wood. And we can find out how much of the old world there was. As you can see, this is what the areas look like. And we can also see that the old world was pretty well off if we could say. And all that from a 6,000 year gap, which includes wars with gods, natural disasters, and drastic change in geography. Compared to Earth in real life, um, they're doing pretty well honestly, but that's beside the point. The sheer size of the Triketra Kingdom and the Unified Civilization would be what real cities are like size-wise, and this doesn't even include other regions. Imagine if we find Sumeru and we find more of these similar Triketra Kingdom ruins, as well as another hole that we can jump into and find more of the unified civilization's ruins. And who knows what would be in other regions, especially Snaznaya and Natlan. So judging from how Hoyoverse has been placing these ruins of the Triketra Kingdom, we can expect that the majority of Teyvat would be covered with these various ruins and hopefully more lore about them. But whether or not they'll place them in each region is up to them. Something that might happen though is that certain regions might have less or much more ruins than others in the future. For example, the Spiral Abyss Domain is the closest to Mondstadt, and Mondstadt is also the place where Durin started its rampage. Now whether or not that was a deliberate strike or that Mondstadt was the nearest place to Conria, we can't really say. Another implication would be that some regions might be closer or more familiar with the old world. So they could either have a better knowledge about history, like let's say Saritza and Piero being awfully familiar with a certain darkness that approached their land. Or maybe even Sumeru knowing or harboring historical evidences of the old world because of their nature as the land of wisdom. And the same goes for Fontaine and Natlan, depending on what Hoyoverse would like to do with them. But of course, 
course, these are all speculations and theories that we can only hope will happen in the upcoming patches. Before ending this video, I'd like to put down my Twitch channel and my Twitter account that I slowly and arduously make more and more active over time. I'm planning on streaming in the future with this new model, which is this guy, so be sure to follow my social medias if you want to know more about my streams and my other future content. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and would want to see more, do leave a like and comment below what you think as well as hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell notification. I post some mind-gobbling content every week and I'm sure you're going to watch my next video, yeah? Okay, thanks, bye! <laughs>